Assalamu alaikum. How's everybody doing? It's Abdul Kabir once again. All right. Uh, let's talk about two little hauls and stuff I picked up. Okay, and stuff my recent hauls. This right here is that of first. I'm going to talk about the Cat M323F Railroad Wheel Excavator. Okay. This is my cat. Okay, this is an HL scale model. This is the price right there. We got from Red Caboose Hobbies down in Manhattan. Okay, let me explore that first. And that's the, that's the appetizer. This right here is the main course. The uh, Rapido General Electric. Well, excuse me, General Motors. Electric Motor Division GP38. Okay, this right here. Is equipped with the SU Loke Sound. Okay. It's a BNSF. More power. It's got a capacitor in there. So, um, we're going to talk about that. Okay. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and initially do our thing right here. Set this camera up. Okay. We're going to talk about this right here. Now, I got some graffiti I'm going to do a little later. Okay, when it gets quiet, and now I'm on break and stuff, because I'm going to head and take care of their deal and stuff. Uh, this right here shows you the functions, okay, about uh, the different excavator situations, as well as, um, you know, different attachments and stuff that would come with that, the wheel excavator. And here is the manual and with all the different types of machines you can purchase so let's take the things out now first and foremost here is the excavator with the bucket okay now okay for those out there that want to do maintenance away and you can now, this is right here this is the more expensive version of course i'm gonna weather it up and stuff so it is what it is but you got your uh i'm saying your boom you got your high rail okay you got your wheels for the road okay you can lift if you want to drive it on the road okay and you have okay your rails which this is what it's really for so again, you know, you can highlight your, you can highlight your, um, you know, your system, your service, okay, um, you know, your maintenance away deal with this, with this right here. So I'm not going to tarry too long, okay, with the attachments. Catch me on Facebook about that, all right? So uh, let's talk about... Let's put this on the roll right here. Okay. We're going to put this on the track. Because, again, it's usually what the uh, wheel excavator is for. Is for the tracks. Okay. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Okay, so this is riding on the tracks or whatever. Okay, I wish that, you know, they would have enhanced it by, you know, giving it some lights and everything. But, you know, um, I mean, something that may be stationary, you know, for your maintenance away type deal. Okay, and of course, you got your attachments. Okay, if they're like changing out ties or, you know, they're shaking a ballast or whatnot. Is your attachments that go with that. Um, as well as, you know, your clamp for your rails. Okay. You know, when it's booming out the rails and everything, moving them about. Okay. The jaws can open, okay, to close to lift the rails. So, again, you know, it can highlight your, uh, you know, your, your maintenance away type deal you know whatever you want to do okay it just swings from side to side as well 
uh, the boom on the stuff of the body swings 360, but I'm not knocking this tank over next to the track and stuff. So we're not going to do that. All right. So, okay, we got that out the way. All right. Now, time for y'all to get to the meat of the deal. Let's okay, the General Motors, Electromotor Division, GP38. Now, inside the box, we have, uh, okay, you got your GP38 manuals, the control stance, by grabbing on to the stuff reverser. Okay, and uh, your operator's manual, okay, Repeater Trains Incorporated. And, of course, those out there who's been buying Repeater, products for some time notice on a lot of locomotives and i got a lot of torpedo engines okay they do have a bit of humor okay you know what i'm saying so you know i got some humor in there and stuff uh so you may seem some sarcastic type deals but again we're not gonna tarry too long about that okay these are functions and everything now also i'll let you know okay within the pack that they don't have an exploded diaphragm diagram, okay, a schematic of the engine, okay, because it's just too much detail, okay, and yes, they have quite a bit. I say that this engine is by far the best locomotive, best GP38 to date that I've seen, okay, so again, okay, because this is an American engine, okay, they are pretty specific. Okay, you got your little stickers and all of that, and your, you know what I'm saying, your little notice telling you that, you know, your exploded diagram, okay, you're going to have to dag on, uh, go online to go ahead and get that. Okay, you got your phone protective cover, and da 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 here is the G, the G38. This is different from the GP38-2. This is the early version, okay, more of a concept and stuff. But um, you have your spare parts. I've already added the uh, the uh, drop steps um, for the front and the back, okay. And you have your detail pieces. These drop steps right here is the ones that sit up, okay, not the ones that sit down okay so let's move this box out the way let's go ahead and let us go ahead and open the box i'm gonna take the plastic sheathing off and we're going to take Clamshell covers delicate because this locomotive ran me about set me back about three hundred and twenty six dollars. That's with the taxes and everything, the New York State taxes and everything. So yeah, yeah, that gonna hit my pockets. But you know, that's why it's good to save your funds, man. You know, if you want to go ahead and get your get the stuff like this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and you know, move the handrail protectors. Okay, the rear protectors. Um, out the box, okay, you know what I'm saying? Some who don't really focus on details, they're going to just say, well, it's a basic locomotive. Ah, no, it's not basic. This is far from your typical GP38 that you're used to. Okay. A heck of a lot far from what you're used to. I'm about to show y'all what it is. All right. Let's just take these handrail protectors before we go ahead and go over what this beast here has to offer. And this handsome beast. Oh my gosh. All right. 
and stuff. So, what we got going on here, okay, you got the, uh, you know, rubber uh, independent cables. You got your train line holes, you know, your, uh, you know, your left and your right and stuff, um, independent cables and stuff, your airline. You got your McCarty coupler, okay, from Rapido. Uh, of course, I went on ahead and I installed the, um, I installed the drop step, okay, to be out. Cause when I looked at prototype pictures, it was always out, okay. You got your stances and everything, okay. It's pretty sturdy, okay. Your plastic uh, chain, that's going to change eventually. Okay, your, um, your, your grab irons and everything. Sander, sander box patch and everything. So, got the kids out there, you know, they're doing a little thing. Icicle uh, antennas, your sunshades. Okay, just different antennas and everything. Okay, your nose headlights. Also, you know, the ditch lights. Okay, and the one thing I like about what Rapido did, they did road specific. Okay, with the ditch lights. Ditch lights. They are steady, okay? They don't flash and oscillate like, you know, most other brands with whatever they do, okay? Uh, okay, you got your nose headlight, you know, specific road, specific detail. Okay, you got your, you know, windshield wipers and everything. There's a cab interior, you know, your number boards. Okay, pretty nice cab, okay? On your side, okay, you know, you got your little sander lines down there. Uh, you know, again, there's a cab interior and also cab interior, the, um, fuel, the, the control stand does light up. Okay. Um, so if you want to add to, um, you know, add the, uh, crew figures inside, if you want to, okay. I'm going to say go online, go ahead and get that going on. Cause I'm not going to do too much tampering with this. And this is too nice. Okay, uh, the see-through steps, as you can see. Uh, yes, really crisp detail. Okay, under the magnification, you can see the warning labels all through the uh, engine. Okay, um, through the engine body. Uh, detailed fuel gauge. The undercarriage is pretty decent as well. Okay, you know, and stuff. Really, really crisp detail. Okay, you got your chicken wire um, and stuff. Rear radiator. Also, you can notice the cannon detail, okay, on the dynamic brakes, as well as the uh, radiator grills in the back, okay, I think it's your RS2 horn, uh, your RS3 horn, excuse me, um, in the back, okay, you have your ditch lights, okay, you got your rear drop step, okay, you got your, you know, your grab irons all the way to the top, you got your sanding line, you got your uh, sander box, um, Hatch, okay, sturdy grab irons on the top as well. And just look at those fans right there. It's beautiful, all right? Another thing, okay, with the smokestacks on the top, okay, is see-through, okay? It's not, um, you know, it doesn't have no plastic baffle or anything. It really, really took the time on this locomotive. On the rear as well, okay, again, the flexible uh, uh, multiple unit independent cables, okay, okay, on the rear as well as the uh, train line holes, okay, it's all rubber, okay, sturdy handrails as well as you can see, okay, there's plastic extensions as well as the metal, you know what I'm saying, railing on the side, again, the conductor side and stuff, also on the back you have the, uh, you know, your couple of lift bars, we can't forget that. Okay, I'm all over the place with this because uh, I really want to go ahead and get this onto the uh, track. See what we've got going on. Okay, your rear truck, your tanks, tank detail and stuff. It's pretty much like what you see inside your pro your pictures. Okay, which I have on Facebook. Okay, which I describe the uh, locomotive. Okay, so you're getting what you pay for when you get this locomotive. All right, so uh, for those out there who do... You know what I'm saying? Who don't have a big layout, okay? This is a win-win situation because, you know, your four axles, where is that, okay? Well, you're going to have a lot of action, okay? You know what I'm saying? Versus, you know, not, not taking away from, you know, the big power, okay? Well, you got, you know, run-through power there with the big trains. But for the small trains, 
this is ideal. I think it's a pretty good investment if you get this engine. Okay, you got your blower housing and everything. You got your bell. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Of course, your dynamic brake grid, your blower housing and everything that comes with that. Okay, your conductor side. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Your, you know what I'm saying? Communications box and everything. Sanding lines, uh, and this is something that I run into a lot with a lot of models. Uh, your sanding, your sanding lines is, uh, it's never attached to the um, truck. And I don't know, I feel some kind of way about it, but I'm not going to tarry too long about that. Okay, we're not going to, you know, make it too much of an issue, but it's just something. Okay. Uh, the um, the uh, trucks, the truck um, lights do light up. Okay, prototypically according to okay to shine strictly down onto the tracks as well as the truck or well above the truck and it's actually housed in the bell shaped um uh light bevel okay you know what i'm saying you got your jack lips and everything speed recorder uh you know what i'm saying you got your brake ratchet right here okay well detail um, and you know, I'm saying again, see through steps. Okay. The engine's pretty impressive. All right. LED lights all through, you know what I'm saying? Stuff, man. Like I said, uh, it's a, it's a daggone good investment. All right. So what we're going to do, go ahead and put it on the tracks. All right. I'm going to cut this thing off right here. Initially, when you put it on the tracks, I do DCC. Okay. You know, please do not discriminate for those who just model DC. Now, this is engine, and, you know, going forward with a lot of Rapido products, okay, does have a capacitor. When you put it on the tracks, okay, automatically, the number boards do light up front and back, okay? Also, the porch light is also lit. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and give it a start. Typical of the prime mover for the GP38, okay, you know what I'm saying, I think it uses a sound system speaker, uh, we'll go ahead and get the bell, nice and crisp, okay, let's get that horn going on. Alright, so we'll go ahead, I'm going to cut them headlights on. And stuff is pretty decent and stuff uh, as well as the stuff when it's going I'm going to get the ditch lights hollering there we go all right now let me show y'all something okay you see the truck lights also you can see inside the cab okay there's the lit control stand gauges and everything in the engine and everything as well as the back Okay, you see the rear porch lights. Okay, you see the front porch lights as well as the head and ditch lights. Okay, so the engine is very well lit. All right. So, okay, the details and everything's extravagant. So, again, you're having a pretty good investment. The sound is just extravagant. All right. Again, so now what I want to do is I want to show you a, a, compa excuse me, a comparison between the sounds of an ESU lock sound with a sound system, with a, with a sound decoder, the sound speaker in there, okay, it's really custom and stuff, and uh, uh, Atlas, as well as, you know, with an Atlas and stuff in their, their system, so, and pretty much it's a, night and day, it's a night and day type of deal, so we're going to go ahead and show you, alright, so... Again, prototypically, prototypically, okay, uh, you know, you got the brake squeal and everything, um, 
And for the typically the ditch lights to not flash. Okay, Southern BNSF, Union Pacific. Okay, does, and you know, same thing with the, uh, if you're running long hood, of course, those out there who know anything about trains, okay, you got your long hood and stuff, you know, or shorter, you know, you run 20 miles per hour, you gotta have ditch lights. So we're gonna go ahead and go in reverse, all right, remember, stuff off. When going in reverse, you know, stuff, man, usually when you're, shop time but you're switching in the yard they don't really have much of the ditch lights on sometimes okay it depends on what, how the engineer feels and also in rule 17 okay you want to go ahead and not blind anybody okay you can go ahead and dim that down but um this right here's a demonstration so engine goes on command and does whatever you need okay because the engine is Buy some cars and it's just kind of makes your rail yard. It's got a capacitor system. So, okay, just showing that right there. Let me show you something. Let's get it shut down right quick. Let me show you something right quick. So, now you heard the sound systems of this um, GP38. Okay, so let's check out this GP40. That, let's check out this GP40 and its sound system. Okay, you know, and stuff, man. And I'm going to show you, just give you a little demonstration, okay, on what may need to be improved. And it's usually the speaker and stuff. So. Mind you, the GP38-2 uses a 2,000 horsepower type unit as well as uh, the GP40 which uses a 3000 horsepower type deal okay now listen to somewhat of a closet it's um type of like it's kind of baffled like a small speaker is what it sounds like on an Atlas and not taking away from what Atlas can offer Another thing Atlas needs to work on is when you're cutting on the headlights as well as the number boards. Well, you're cutting on the headlights, the number boards cut on. So a couple of modelers, you know, that want prototypical accuracy, okay, it's going to, you know, nail Atlas on that. Uh, same thing with the ditch lights, okay, you know, with the ditch lights. Now, CPKC, or former CP Rail, okay, does not flash its ditch lights, okay, but listen to the bells. This is, you know, unprototypical, okay, for those who are modeling CPKC or CP Rail, okay, so, you know, that's a complaint. Also, this engine does not have a capacitor. Now, also, again, this engine does not have a capacitor where this engine has a capacitor. Okay. So, somewhere this track is dirty. Okay. Now, the truck lights... The step lights, okay, you know, those right there, I have to install myself. Yeah, I have to, I have to install that myself, okay. I was thinking about adding a capacitor on there, but, you know, 
really trying to find time to get some room to do that. Again, I'm just showing you, you know, the start of the show is really this right here. I'm just showing you the difference, okay? Now, you check out the sound system here with this Atlas GP40. I bought this as a Canadian Pacific, excuse me, a CP rail unit. And, uh, you know what I'm saying, because of CPKC, and I went on ahead and, you know, did it up and stuff as such. So... So, now head to head, now listen to the sound of this GP38-2. Of course, again, you know, your Rule 17, the... Uh, Lights actually dim on command. Alright. And ditch lights and stuff. You know, again, prototypically, they do not flash. DSF don't flash as ditch lights. Alright. So there's something Atlas needs to fix. You can program it to for it not to do so. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna go ahead and advance and listen to the horn. Some of the bells advance forward into a rev up. Door slam, okay. You can barely hear the GP forty. Shouldn't have went like that. I don't know why it's a daggone lurch going on. But here we go. A head to head type thing between Rapido and Atlas. Once again, again, it's a night and day type deal, as you can see. Rapido and Atlas. Stuff I had to add on the Atlas, and stuff I didn't have to add on Rapido. Both got a decent, you know, light fixtures and everything. Light brightness, okay? Depends on your preference. I'm pretty happy. You know what I'm saying? I may do a little more tweaking with uh, 4600. But I'm going to go ahead and conclude this review. Okay, and uh, yeah. So right now, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead. We're going to shut it down, both of them. So what I have to say... 
And uh, again, you know, with taxes, New York State taxes altogether, I paid three hundred and twenty six dollars and sixty one cent. It is GP thirty eight dash two. I paid less than that for this uh, GP40, okay? You know what I'm saying? I did a review on this a while ago and stuff. But, uh, again, I had to do a little tweaking to get it up to specs somewhat, all right? But um, I still got to get that blink, that beacon to, you know, light up. I probably wired. I don't know, you know. And, of course, you know, for maintenance service, okay, I went on ahead and did some upgrades and stuff. We got this guy. So, like, bump, like it, bump it, dump it, write it, okay, write to your mama, whatever, I don't know, and stuff, man. But, um, again, you know, Rapido, Rapido, Dow done it again. I know when that Winnebago show up, it's going to be live, okay, with those daggone Metro cars, okay. I can't wait to do a review on that. As well as their upcoming uh, comic coaches, okay, that I have to replace because somebody in the museum lost one of my sets. Okay, so I'm still tight about that, but uh, we, that's another thing. I just review kind of long and stuff. We shut it down. But, um, yeah, tell me if you like it. Like, subscribe, you know, um, comment. Just that the third. Tell me what you think about it. All right. Some of y'all probably bought it. Okay, and, uh, yeah, I got to. Go ahead, nah, because it's the start of the show right now. Uh, all right, no doubt.